Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Crime Centric This Finger Show. It's about crime dramas that I watch. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of The Blacklist. A great episode. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. Well, first and foremost, we have this situation where Reddington is meeting his friend from the East, and it's obviously like, okay, I'm going I'm to smooth everything over. I'm going to look him in the eyes, reconfirm, like, hey, I got this Cooper thing under control. Don't worry about it. But it's also like, well, what are you going to do about Cooper? It's like, uh, can't really stop him from doing his investigation. So Reddington is still trying to figure things out on that front. Uh, but sadly, everything was set in motion last episode. So Keaton's killing that congressman that was in contact with um, Harold and uses him to draw Harold out into a trap. And Harold ends up getting captured because we end up finding out between their conversations. Rakeaton had, like, obviously Reddington's buddy knows all about the FBI deal. I guess that started off as one thing of, like, okay, like, you being close to the FBI gets uh, gives us access because, for one, it gives Reddington his immunity deal. But it also allows him to do stuff. Maybe... Maybe that also ties back to the blacklist in general. I mean, to be fair, whatever their end game is, they are building this massive criminal empire and intersection of all these things, like all these connections and ties that they have. I'm assuming that's what this has all been about, that the blacklist and getting the FBI to help out take out the competition might have always been the point. Because that was always the thing. Every time they've worked with Reddington, yeah, they've taken out some bad people, but Reddington's always managed to kind of come on it, be on the up and up afterwards. So that might be part of the plan that the blacklist has always been that. And so, because it seems like the friend of the East, from the East is like, yeah, I'm so okay with the you working with the FBI, but for him, it's like now Reddington's gotten too damn close, gotten too attached to them. Because initially it was, he, I don't even know if he knows about the whole Liz connection. Like, it's hard to say what he knows, but we do know now Rakeaton had no idea. Like, I mean, last episode should have been, uh, gave that away too, that like, oh, he doesn't know that Reddington's tied to the FBI. This episode just confirms that. Um, so, it's like, we can't let Rakeaton talk. He knows too damn much. And also, if he finds out, what you've been working with the FBI the entire time, oh, it's going to sour that relationship quickly and so Reddington's pissed because it's like I told you not to let this happen I told you to I'd handle it and you couldn't listen and you couldn't wait so now Reddington's gonna jump on this and obviously uh Rakeaton's saying like oh he's gonna set up this whole situation with Harrow to make it look like a suicide he's like yeah so if you don't cooperate I'm gonna make you the same promise I made to congressman it's like oh his daughter was gonna have a long long life yes he has to die but I guarantee that his daughter would live you on the other hand I'll make sure, you know, if you if you're not complicit, I will take a vi- I will visit your wife and your son. Because um, the thing is, the congressman was like, you're not going to get away with this. He's like, honestly, you're probably right. He's like, we don't have any idea how the future is going to unfold. But at the very least, I know that you won't be here to see the outcome. So, but when the time comes, Reddington trying to get him at first, it's like, you don't have my permission to do this. And he's like, I kind of don't care if I don't have your permission to do this. So, um, at the end of the day, um, he calls back and is like, all right, get some information out of him. Like he's working for a task force. Let find out what the task force knows. And Rakeem's like, yep, I'm all over. It's like, all right, do you have his location? All right, get to, uh, letting the task force know, get to Harold before it's too late. Luckily, wrestler and them show up, take out the other guys, arrest for Keaton. Luckily, you know. Harold's all right. And it's like, all right, let's start interrogating this SOB. And just when, um, Harold's kind of getting his thing, doing his whole thing. Reddington needs to make this whole situation go away. So uh, the moment he's like, oh, I'm going to need some, like the moment's like, how are we going to get into the, the, the task force is going to be so heavily guarded. Like he's going to be so heavily guarded. How are we going to get to him? The moment it's like Reddington's going to need someone. I was like, that good old favor park owes him and jumps on that immediately. It's like, yeah, I need you to come here. And it's so interesting to find out like, oh, he's like, oh, look. Just look, just wait to see what happens. And she's like, what, dearly? He's like, ding, 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 got it in one. And it's just like, wow. He, um, that was amazing because it's like, wait. So that's why I was wondering. I was like, whether Dita Lee was dead or not. It's like, I figured as much when Park attacked him, she beat the shit out of him, but didn't kill him. She was on the assumption that Reddington made it, made him disappear. And it's like, he did by offering him a new identity. And it's like, I'm keeping his mouth shut. Now, if you aren't careful, I, so this is the ultimate blackmail. It's not only that, oh, you have a dead body on you. It's like, hey, benefit is you actually didn't kill him, so that's good. But the drawback is he will sink you. He, you. you will go not only lose your job, you will also go to jail because of this. 
the fact of the matter is, you know, for Parker, it's like, well, who's going to believe him over me? And it's like, well, we also have this video recording of you, so you kind of screw. You need to do what we ask you to. So I love ready to ah, oh, I just love surprises. One of my favorite lines, though, too, is just like, it's one of those things that gives you chills. You're like, oh, look at Reddington being the boss, being the badass dude that he is. It's just like, when he was talking to his friend from the East, and it was like, oh, I think I've made him, I think you're mistaken, my old friend. Like, you're, we're, we've worked together for so long, I think you've forgotten who you're talking to. I'm like, oh, I love that line, dude. That line was so damn good in the way he delivered it, too. It was just like, it's like, I think you've forgotten who you're talking to. And it's like the pulse. Dude, I had to rewind. I was like, that shit was too damn good, dude. I was like, I love it when Reddington gets super sinister like that. It's like, you've forgotten who you're talking to. Was, oh, dude, dude, that shit is sick. Um, but nevertheless, uh, Cooper is letting Cynthia know everything about what's going on in 13 understanding why Liz has done all that she's done, which obviously Cynthia's like, so you're telling me we've given total immunity to a potential Russian spy? Possibly. And it's like, oh, this is going to, ugh. Which is already bad enough, all the stuff they had to deal with in court about this, that coming to the forefront on multiple occasions. Not once, twice now, that's come to the forefront in court. And now you also have to deal with it, like, backlashing against you of, like, this will be the biggest blunder in U.S. history, potentially. Aside from, like, I mean, obviously, on, like, I mean, on, like, the espionage level, obviously, like, the U.S. government, the U.S. US has a lot of other big, 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 big mistakes in its history. So don't want to make comparison apples and oranges. But on an espionage level, this will probably end up being, like, the biggest, like, we, we some really screwed this up like that's going to be the whole i mean everyone's heads are going to roll because of this mistake potentially so but cooper goes in there hard he's trying to ask because we're keeps the entire time like um cooper's interrogating he's like how did you find out like that's what he's trying to rack his mind about because it's like i've been doing this so long without issue and then all of a sudden bam you got all this stuff on me it's like i literally offered you up a patsy and you kept coming back he's like i don't get it how you knew and even got to the point that Cooper was like, oh, the one who told us was Reddington. Played the recording and everything. And Cynthia was like, do not. Cooper, I need to talk to you. And he was like, what are you doing? And she's like, what are you doing? You know, facts and truth. Like, the fact of the matter is, if you let him know that Reddington sold him out, that we have a deal with Reddington, and Reddington's been working with us, we can never take anything he says as truth. Because anything he said could just be him giving the middle finger to Reddington, knowing that Reddington's the reason why he's in this spot. So we have to be smart. It's the thing is, Cooper's so caught up in this because for him, it's like the biggest betrayal. Because regardless of him being the criminal that he is... He thinks of Reddington as a friend and an ally. Like, they're, you know, it's like, you know, especially because Cooper skirted so many gray lines. He's crossed so many boundaries, crossed so many lines for Reddington because he thought it was for the greater good to find out the person that was going to be your key to the greater good. Yes, he's a bad guy. Yes, he's profiting from it, but it's for the greater good to find out, wait, this guy was working against our country the entire time that he would be kind of our undoing. He's been giving away intelligence for years. It's going to hit, like, it makes you question Everything that you've ever done, that everything that this task force has done over the years for these eight seasons, like, it's going to make you question everything, you know, so that pisses them off, plus knowing, like, that's everything, you know, also feeling like, you know, he was caught in, like, not sure where to, whose side to choose, but now realizing, like, oh, this is what Liz is fighting for, what she's fighting about, so, you know, in that regard, too, so Liz's future is in the balance, so, a lot of that sits doesn't sit well with uh, Cooper, so there's that. So, but when the time does come, he goes back in there, and Rakitin kind of figures it out. He's like, right? He's like, this was Reddington punishing me because I asked Reddington for permission to kill you, and he said no. And it's like, you know, this is basically Reddington throwing me to the wolves, showing that I am, despite all the good work I've done, I am disposable to him. The fact that matters, and they're also piecing it together. Reddington works with you. He's your informant. And just basically be like, all right, fine. Like, you need me to talk? I'll talk. So they're getting ready to sign, like, a whole thing. You have Wrestler the entire time calling up Liz, being like, hey, this might be the end. Well, she call, he calls up the lawyer dude that she works with, and he kind of gets in contact. Like, she, he only talks to her, like, by leaving her messages. She, he never gets a res- direct response from her, but it's like, 
Kane, this might be all over. The fact of the matter is he, we've got Rakitin. This might be the end of proving that Reddington is in 13. Uh, Reddington uh, meets with that um, dude um, who's just pretending to be a teacher. But it's like, oh, no. He, and I love that he's talking to them. He's like, oh, my God, we like, we're like I was like, he's like, yeah, you might not recognize. I mean, to be fair, don't don't let Badu. You, we met once years ago. He's like, let, let me do this. And he puts on a hat and he holds out his hands like, ah. And the guy's like, Reddington. He's like, yeah. And he's like, Dimbe, do you not know who this is? Like, oh, my God. Like, it's almost like we're in the presence of a celebrity, which even Dimbe's like, oh, yeah, didn't you do that particular job? And it's like, yeah. And Dimbe's like, who'd you do it for? And Reddington says, ah, I don't say anything. Was it for M M M MI6? It had to be. With all, all the gadgets that you do, obviously, it had to be you doing that work for them. I, just, I like that. It's like them geeking out like, oh, my God, we're in front of, like, uh, a criminal connoisseur, a criminal mastermind with just, like, what he, what he does. And so... He needs his help with like, yeah, like whatever the case may be. He's like, oh, you want me to break him out? It's like, ah, whatever you think is the appropriate action. Just know that this dude cannot talk. So, sets, um, I will tell you initially, I didn't know what to expect of that letter that he gave to, um, Park. That is like, all right, I want you to give this to him. How? Ah, you figure it out. But it's like, do, there are specific instructions in there for him. Do not open it under any circumstances. And when it's all said and done, you get the letter back, you burn it. Yeah. But I'm like, I, I didn't know what to make of it. I thought like, I just wasn't sure. I was like, because I thought maybe the long game was you have some instruction there in there and you thought Park would read them. And it's like, oh, just in case you read them, it'd be some BS. And then like you guys try to prepare for what you think Reddington's going to do. And it's like, once again, I keep referencing this because it's stuck in my head because I watched the movie so many times. The Kansas Shuffle. Is it the Kansas Shuffle or is it the Kansas City Shuffle? I think it's the Kansas City Shuffle. I think I've been quoting, misquoting that the entire time. It, it might just be the Kansas Shuffle. I haven't seen Lucky Number 7 in years. I've been re recently referencing that, like the Kansas Shuffle. Once again, it's like a magic trick. While you're over here looking at the left hand, you should be looking at, looking at the right hand when everything's going down. Like, obviously, that's the main overarching theme of the movie. It, it, it's, a, it's a theme that pops up through, all throughout. But I can't, like I said, I can't remember if it's the Kansas Shuffle or the Kansas City Shuffle. Whatever the case may be, um, I thought that's kind of where we were going with that. And then the moment Park got in there, talked to him and everything, and he pulls it out and it's blank. I was like, what the hell was that? And then the moment it was blank, I was like, the freaking paper's poison. That's why he told Park not to touch it. Like, I knew in that moment, I was like, wow. And because he made a point to tell Park. What happens at the end of the day, do not blame yourself. This is on me. This isn't on you. So I was like, now the moment the blank paper came out, I was like, that's what he was talking because he knew Park was going to take it directly. So she kind of took the paper back thinking like, oh, it's BS. I don't know, what the hell was that? Then like as Jesse's ready to start talking, he dies. And even on the way, like Reddington being like, this isn't what he wanted. He didn't want it for Cooper. He didn't want it for Park. He didn't even want this for Rakeet. Because he even says it later on. He's like, yeah, he wasn't too fond of Rakeet. And it's just kind of like, eh, just, I didn't like him on a personal level. Dude did good work. He was a genius at what he did. Kind of a little perpetuant for my, my taste. But it's still like he appreciated the kid's work. Especially because the kid, like, which... You know, which is weird for me to say, kid, because the actor who plays him is probably, like, either older than me or just my own same, about my age, if not a little older. Whatever the case may be. Um, but Rakitin was good at what he did, and even said, like, they even talk about it. Like, there were so many damn projects he was working on, like, a dozen right now, that literally with him dead, they all fall apart. But just, like, everyone, like, and it's not like it was, it was kind of a brutal death, like him spitting up blood and stuff. I was like, whoa, you know? But, you know, despite everything, Dibbe saying, like, you saved Cooper. So, at the end of the day, this was the right thing to do. So, it was just kind of like, well, it, it had to be done. And so, I love that whole, like, situation playing out the way it is. And even, you know, Park confronting Reddington. He's like, I told you um, what happens. It's on me. But she's like, I'm an accessory. And, you know, I, I'm going to go tell Cooper. He's like, isn't that ironic? Like, your whole situation with Deirdre, you didn't, you wanted that to go away so that you would, you know, keep your job and not go to jail. And it's like, what do you think is going to happen the moment you tell Cooper? It's like, what am I supposed to do? I'd burn a letter if I were you. And she ended up burning the letter. And even Cynthia's like, wait, you think Reddington was really behind this? Does he really have the balls to just kill a man and just show up here like nothing? And then as he's walking in, Aram... And uh, wrestler look at him because that's also the thing for Rom. It's like if that's true about Reddington, like it's just kind of like, wait, what? Like 
because obviously for some people it's like there's just something not working here because even Cynthia brought it up it's like if he was in 13 why would he like save you also like wouldn't he be jumping on trying to kill this guy if that was the case which obviously ultimately ends up being the case so it just reconfirms even more for them that Reddington is in 13 and Reddington's like oh Cynthia I didn't know you were here oh my god and it's like did you have him killed and he's like what and it's like no just stop is this a game to you and he's like a game I warned you, Harold, how this was all going to play out. And Harold was like, you think I was going to take your threats? He was like, my threats. He's like, did you really think the people that were Keaton was going to work for were just going to let you go like on with all the, like, knowing anything at all? And it's like, oh, so they're like inadvertently ready to his confirming things. But for him, it's like, in this moment, you might not like it. Like, the fact of the matter is, it's like, you might not basically like hearing me say this but basically it's a thing of like they do owe him because it's like both of you things could come ugly would have gotten real ugly if any of you had heard what Rakitin had to say so you know my friends my friend isn't too like who Rakitin worked for is not too afraid to come after you they were willing to come after you despite being the director of the FBI like so you think they wouldn't come you know so it's like you're all actually safe because if you all heard what he said you'd all be dead so and Reddington's mind is like despite the bumpy road he had to get there he was protecting these people because he does care about them I don't think just because of Liz's sake but also for his own sake you know so that's kind of how I uh, chalk that up but um After it all being said and done, he just kind of ups and leaves. Um, you know, he even threw it out there. It's like, well, I wasn't the one responsible for it. If it was so, if he died and it wasn't, it was a murder, might have to start looking at some people here. And I'm like, I guess he's throwing it out there because now it's going to be a thing of, do they believe what Reddington said, or is he just being coy and trying to mess with them? Or is he doing that to kind of throw them off the set by having them do it because they're so focused on a witch hunt? at the task force that they're not going to be investigating all this other stuff. I don't know. Um, but I love that when they're on the plane and stuff like that and his friend gets on board and Reddington just like hits him and he's like, you hit me. And he was like, next time you threaten to send the organization after me, I don't care who you work for. I, you know, I'm making these threats. And I love that line of like, you know, you might at be asking, um, you know, you might be saying like, oh, maybe I've gotten too attached to them, but may, whatever the case may be, that is not in your purview, basically saying it's my business, not yours. So when I tell you next time not to do something, don't do it. It's like, oh, just like, just because it's like, usually like, yes, he has his moments, but you never see Reddington with such fury. Usually he is, there is a calm, cool and collectedness, even to his mercilessness. Like, even when he's scary and just being the killer that he is, like, there is still this, this, this quiet storm that's there. And to see that just, like, burst out the scenes, and he's like, you know, you, my friend, you know, I, we've known each other for a long, long time. And the fact of the matter is, we are reaching the end game. And it's like, you know, and it's like, I think this is all coinciding with Reddington's death. Like, he's sick. And I think for him, it's like, it's only a matter of time until we reach the end on more than one front. And it's like, that's why it seemed like he was kind of taking that deep breath because it was just kind of like, I think it was kind of getting too worked up. But it's like, this is the end on more in more ways than one. And it's like, for Reddington, we even saying that this is my end game. And it's like, ooh, even being like, yeah. Which obviously, it's kind of funny for him. Obviously, the word in game gets thrown around a lot lately, but also it's like, it's just interesting. Obviously, if you're unaware, James Spader, who plays Re uh, Raymond Reddington, also voiced, I don't know if he did mocap, but I know he definitely voiced uh, Ultron in Avengers Age of Ultron. Uh, feel however you want to about the movie. I know a lot of people are mixed on it. I really liked him as Ultron. That's why I was almost kind of spoiler hoping that he'd come back when some people are kind of thinking, like, oh, Spoilers for WandaVision uh, was going to be a certain character. I'll leave it at that. Like There was a character that popped up that some people were like, oh, be cool if James Spader voiced his character. It ended up not being the case, but still, regardless. Um, I do hope they do bring him back, because obviously he's a major villain in the comic. I don't see them bring... But he's a robot, so he could easily find a way to squirm around that. I hope they do. I would love to see uh, Ultron back in the um, MCU. Because you know, I, I love James Spader. I think he's great. And I would love... Because uh, I, I liked... Because he has his char like charisma to him, even as Ultron. There's something about him as Ultron. It just Obviously, he has like... 
so much charisma up the wazoo as um, Raymond Reddington. Also, I've been using the word wazoo a lot. Like, I would keep saying, like, up the wazoo and stuff like that. I don't, I don't know why. I just, that's just kind of, it's just my, it just kind of what comes, like, comes out of my mouth first, I guess. I don't know. But, um, it is, begs the question, what is this end game of his? Um, I mean, as Dembe said later, earlier on, there was a line of, he's spitting so many plates at once. So it's like, all right, he's got everything set back on course on this front. But then there's still like the, hey, Harold's not really going to let this go, but I guess, like, once again, I guess that's why you threw out the hint of, maybe it's one of your people, so it's going to be on the watch. I'm sure wrestler disappearing like that, like, oh, who the hell were you calling? Oh, were you t talking to Liz? Like, obviously, Liz isn't going to want him dead or keep him dead just because it's like, well, he had information. It would have proved a lot, because that's also the thing, too, like, you know, because even Park was like, yeah, maybe Liz can come back, you know, come from the code, but for... Aram, it's like, yeah, but she's done a lot. She's worked, she freed the freelancer, also had him almost crash planes. It's like, yeah, but she saved him. She got us to get to it. Yeah, but what if we didn't? It's like, he's hoping for the best, but it's also like, when it's all said and done, like, we don't know what it's going to be like when we try to bring Liz back in and, like, what that's going to look like. She did a lot of terrible stuff. Yeah, she had her reasons, but still, it's like, once again, let's not forget who she's working with. She's working with Townsend. It's like, once again, your enemy of my enemy is my friend. But that's also another thing some people will tell you. Oh, uh, the enemy of my enemy is just someone, another person looking to stab me in the back. That was, I don't remember what that reference is from. Because sometimes it would just be, the enemy of my enemy is just another enemy. But I think specifically, the, the enemy of my enemy is just another person stab, waiting to stab me in the back. I don't, I have to look that up. I, that was like a, I want to say it's specifically a movie. I just can't remember what. Not even be on TV show, just because I watch more TV than I do movies, so I feel like it had to be something for that. Regardless, I'm going on a huge tangent. And obviously, wrestler had his meeting with Liz, but she didn't show up, and he was like, honestly, like, it worked out that you didn't show up because Rakitin's dead, and he's like, just, honestly, we just, we all miss you, so. But it turns out Liz was nearby, she was just watching, because I guess she just didn't want to take the chance that wrestler would try and bring her in at this point in time. Because it was the thing of, like, just show up. I know you kind of don't know if you can trust me, but you can trust me. But uh, she listens to a voicemail, and obviously she drives away. So it's going to be interesting to see where everything ends up taking us. Obviously, this park situation is going to be interesting because it's not just the whole thing of what she did. It's also living with it because, like, eventually makes you wonder, is the guilt going to eat her up? To be fair, she's not the only one that's kind of done something. This is a little different, but also I, it's the reference I made before. It's like... Let's not forget, wrestler had a body in a one in a large tub. It was the the lady that was working with the cabal. Um, Christine, is it Christine or Christina? Christina Lottie's character. I can I always I always, always flip Christina and Christine in certain. Cards. I want to say it's Christina, but it might be Christine. Miss Lottie. I don't remember her character's name. Uh, obviously, she when did like season four her character got killed? There was an accident between her and wrestler, and she ended up dying. I want to say that was season four. I think, yeah, it had to be season four because that was around the time that wrestler's buddy was looking into Reddington and that's when Kate kind of exposed all the dead bodies. Showed literally where all the dead bodies were buried. Uh, regardless, the whole tangent. Like, th that's the whole point was like, yeah, uh, Park is in a very similar circumstance to that wrestler was. So, now that we're kind of getting this whole, well, you know, end games kind of already being set in motion, you know, it makes you wonder what these final points are, you know, what is, you know, the end result of all of this, like, what are they planning, what is, you know, what is this end game, uh, how is Harold going to respond, like I said, what is Park going to do, wrestler, Liz, like, obviously, she's going to go full steam ahead with her side of things, especially now knowing that one of the few people that could prove it is gone, so she might lean more into with uh, Townsend just to take Reddington out rather than even attempt to expose him. It might be a thing of there's no point in exposing him because he's always going to like manipulate someone into helping him. Not unless we get a situation where she finds out about Park's situation and is threatening, the, or at least not necessarily threatening her, but maybe promising to help her. You know, I don't know. Might be like, oh, Helping me take down Redditon is going to clear your conscience in some shape or form. Maybe she want to just do that naturally. Like I said, a lot of thoughts kind of flowing in my head about this. I, I'm very interested to see what ultimately all this ends up taking us going forward into the next episode. But really, that's all I want to talk about. Till the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and good
Bye.